All right, so this is going to be the power supply for my entire home lab. It's going to allow me to switch the power points, uh, which are top here, on off remotely. I'm repurposing it from like an old uh, Christmas light display that we had out in the front yard there at one point in time that we could control uh, via the Raspberry Pi. Um, so that was a couple of years ago now, but what I'm, first of all, what I'm going to do is this connection that I used is probably not up to scratch to holding the amount of power uh, that we're going to be pulling through with the servers, the switches um, in our lab, like as a main incoming feed. So I'm going to pull that out first um, and also get a voltage regulator in here for the Raspberry Pi uh, when we go and replace this. This is the A, but the A is going to be no good to me because I need to have the Ethernet connection or um, probably end up using Wi-Fi as well, but yeah, predominantly the Ethernet connection for me to be able to log into the web page and to turn those relays on and off one by one. Um, I think they're one and a half mil diameter cable. Um, this is probably one mil for the looks of that. Um, so yeah, we need to we need to get that out of there so we can put something a bit heavier duty in. I think it's pretty cool that you can turn relays on and off from a web page. It goes without saying, this stuff's lethal. If you haven't played with power before, or you don't know what you're doing, don't do this. It, it, it could be the last thing you ever do. So um, use a qualified electrician or someone who's experienced in dealing with power if you want to build one of these yourselves. Uh, but yeah, just, this is going on the internet. I need to tell you guys, it should be common sense, but if you haven't played with power, don't do this. So anyway, I'm gonna get to it, pull this out, get this main feed out and uh, yeah. Thinking too whilst we're at it, I might even remove these extension leads off uh, of this. We might put them in at a later date, but for the moment they're, they're no longer required either. Watch out for little guys like this. If that gets into your relays where the 240 volt is, that will cause you all sorts of lightning in the box, and we don't want to, as they'd say, let the pixies down the wire cause havoc. So just make sure you, you mop those up as you go along as well. They should point out too, it's the same mounting holes for the A and the B's. Actually, in fact, all Raspberry Pi's got the same mounting holes, apart from the zeros, obviously. Um, yeah, you can reuse them all, which is really awesome of them to do that. All right, time to find some nice heavy duty incoming cable. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I have found a piece of cable, even with an end on it. How lucky am I? It looks a wee bit corroded, but anyway, we'll ignore that for the time being. So, stamped on the cable, which you're probably not gonna be able to see on the camera, is 1.5 square uh, millimeters. So perfect, matches the rest of all this, which is what we want to see. Um, and we'll run that up into here. And I'll put some cable ties on there to stop that from, oh, one big one maybe, stop that from falling back through the hole. Now I'm not going to do that up tight because inevitably it's going to need to move or when I dress it neater, it, um, it'll stick differently. So at the moment we'll just leave that there. Uh, the strips are open. Hey, presto. It's good. 
So we can literally plug that in and the pie should start and we should get the relay board fired up um, and that'll start working. I'll have to short, uh, sort out very shortly where all these go. Now I know there is a faulty GPIO pin on this pie. Which one is anyone's guess at this point in time? I have no idea which one it is. Okay, as you can see in that short little blip there, I've just gone and added in the mouse keyboard, Ethernet cable, HDMI for, um, for our Pi here. So we're ready to fire it up. So the main thing you want to do at this point in time is make sure SSH is enabled on this, uh, on this machine. That's Windows here. Um, Pass it up and spell. Uh, so from another machine, make sure that you can SSH into it. Now, beautiful. Make sure that works before you close out the box. Something else I made up uh, in the first sort of uh, incarnation of this PDU was this really, really short, found this one. I had a Cat5 socket lying around for years. As of, for some reason, it was in a pink or red toolbox. Um, but yeah, we're gonna pop that in there now. I forgot to mention that before. And we also need to connect the GPIO pins. So, I'll put those on the first four um, sequential, because I've only got four relays in use, really. One, two, three, four. Um, the other ones are sort of wired up, but they're not ready to go. We'll use them for something else, maybe another day. I'll put more PowerPoints around the box when it's required, but for the moment, I'm only doing four. That's eight, you idiot. Four. Um, so I'm going to super glue this little guy into place, so it doesn't move around on us. Mark my words, I think it's pin 4 that's crook. We'll find out. Just occurred to me whilst I was sitting there testing this that I should be filming. I've got the first two relays working, now here's that fourth one. Let's see whether that actually, actually goes off. So, if I set, um, okay, 4. There's an out. Here we go, are you ready? Hey! So that's one, two, so two, three, four. So I was wrong. So this should light up the fourth relay, which is 17. <gasps> There's the one that might be done. I reckon 17's dead, okay. Let's try 27. So 27. Now this is a live box, so I've got to be very, very, very careful here. And pop this one across onto 27. And let's do that. 27. Fourth relay should dot up. Yay! Happy days. Beautiful. So the pin that is stuffed is GPO 017. That's really not a big deal at the end of the day, so I just need to remember which ones are which. That's the main thing. So when we go and program our Python script or our web-based script very shortly, these are the GPIO pins that we need to program them on. I should center it here. These are the ones that we need to program it on to control each individual relay. Got to remember that. As you probably already heard me harp on at the moment, safety is everything. I'm going to close this box up. It's okay to do it while it's running. There's no no harm in that. But those four relays are energized. So these power points on the front are all active. They're all running. So people out on the net, guys, be vigilant, I suppose you could say. When you're driving around, I was driving around one day, this is many moons ago, and I saw the council had a bin and they were upgrading all the parking meters in my city. This is one of the old control boxes from the parking meters, as you can see there. So it's a great, Great project box. I've got all sorts of telecommunications boxes that I use, um, you know, project boxes for all over, all, all many different things. One thing that you will see very shortly actually is the dog kennel woofer, I call it. Um, I'll do a bit of a video on how that works and you'll see that I'm using a telecommunications uh, what is it, like a termination, I suppose you'd call it, box to house all the components in the Raspberry Pi in my dog kennel. So yeah, get over and, and check out that video as well. And there you have it. Your PDU for the home lab. Internet controlled, internet connected, power distribution unit, 
and that you can control from anywhere in the world. Happy days. Let's go get it plugged in. So now if everything went to plan, we should be able to hit these buttons on the web page, which will turn them on. So now we're switching 240 volt with a web-based application. How cool is that?